The fluid mosaic model of the membrane describes the structure and the organization of the biological cell membrane. What it tells us is, the structure is not rigid or static in nature. On the contrary, it's very fluid-like. And that's because the individual constituents, the molecules that make up the membrane, are in a constant state of motion. So we have two types of motion. Previously, we discussed lateral motion or lateral diffusion. And what that means is, if we take a look at the membrane, so we have two sides of the membrane, two leaflets, one leaflet and the opposing leaflet. So the individual phospholipid molecules, these lipid molecules along any leaflet, can move relatively quickly and easily along that leaflet. And they move at a rate of about one micrometer per second. Now, proteins within the membrane can also move along that membrane in a lateral direction. Now, some proteins move relatively quickly, while other proteins are essentially immobile. Why? Well, because some proteins, like this one here, isn't actually physically attached onto any other molecule or any other structure. But other transmembrane proteins or integral proteins are basically attached onto physical structures. For instance, in this case, it's attached not only onto the collagen fibers of the extracellular matrix found outside the cell, but they're also attached onto the filaments in the cytoskeleton found in the cytoplasm inside of that cell. So this one will be relatively mobile while this protein will be able to move along that lateral direction. Now, what allows these phospholipids to actually move along that direction. Well, basically, as the phospholipid moves along the lateral direction, those bonds between the water molecules and the polar heads remain, and likewise, the bonds between the adjacent hydrocarbon nonpolar tails also remain. And so there's really not too much energy that must be overcome as these phospholipids actually move along any given leaflet. But let's suppose instead of moving along the lateral direction, one of these phospholipids, let's say this one here, wants to actually rotate and move from one side of the membrane, from one leaflet, to the other side of the membrane, that opposing leaflet. Will this actually take place? So this process is known as transverse diffusion or simply flip-flopping. So do phospholipids actually flip-flop? And the answer is yes, but flip-flopping doesn't take place at the same rate that lateral diffusion takes place. In fact, lateral diffusion takes place much more quickly than transverse diffusion does. The question is why? Well, to see why, let's compare these two diagrams. Remember, when we have lateral diffusion, the movement of these phospholipids doesn't actually break the net bonds between the water molecules and the polar heads. And likewise, the hydrophobic interactions within the tail region actually remains the same when they move along that horizontal direction. But what happens if a phospholipid like this one here actually wants to rotate? So in this diagram, we see that there is a stabilizing interaction that takes place between the water molecules in the aqueous environment and the polar head. And likewise, we should always note, we should also note that there are also stabilizing interactions that take place between these adjacent sections here. So the hydrocarbon portion of the adjacent uh, hydrocarbon tails of these adjacent phospholipids. Now, when the phospholipid tries to rotate, it actually has to physically rotate and move through that hydrocarbon core of the membrane, hydrocarbon core of that membrane. And when this happens is, we actually lose these stabilizing interactions here and these stabilizing interactions here as shown in this particular case. So basically, the polar head does not actually want to interact and cannot interact in a stabilizing way with that hydrophobic core of the membrane. And likewise, the nonpolar tail portion of the phospholipid also cannot and does not want to interact with the water molecules of the aqueous environment. So we see that whenever a flip-flop takes place, 
there is a certain amount of energy, a relatively large amount of energy that actually must be overcome. So there's a large energy barrier to this process and that's because this process is energetically unfavorable. The interactions in this case aren't stabilizing like the interactions are in this particular case. So we conclude that these fossil lipids can move relatively quickly and easily along a leaflet in the lateral direction. But even though fossil lipids can actually flip flop, they can move transversely, this process takes place relatively slowly as a result of the high energy barrier that must be overcome. Now, what about proteins? Can, per uh, can proteins actually flip flop? Well, proteins have a much higher hydrophilic region, so polar region, than these phospholipids do. And that's exactly why if a protein is actually to flip-flop, it has to overcome a very large energy barrier, much higher than the energy barrier in the phospholipid rotation. And, that, and that's exactly why these proteins do not actually flip-flop. They do not actually transverse that membrane. They only move along that lateral direction. So proteins which have much more extensive hydrophilic polar regions must overcome an even higher energy barrier. And that's exactly why they do not actually flip-flop. So we conclude three important points. Point number one, Phospholipids move relatively freely and quickly along the lateral direction. And although proteins can also move relatively quickly along the lateral direction, some proteins are actually immobilized because of attachments to other structures. Now, although these phospholipids can actually move transversely, they can flip-flop, the rate at which they flip-flop actually takes place at a much lower rate than lateral diffusion. And proteins cannot diffuse altogether because of that high energy barrier that must be overcome. The polar region, the extensive polar region of the protein cannot interact in a favorable way with the hydrophobic core of that lipid bilayer membrane. Now, in fact, inside our membranes, we have these special proteins known as flipases that actually allow the movement of these phospholipids across that membrane. So lipases are proteins that can assist in the transverse diffusion of lipids, and we'll discuss these in much more detail in future lectures. And so number three, proteins do not actually flip-flop. And this leads us directly to an important point that we're going to expand on in a future lecture. Basically, the fact that these proteins do not actually move transversely and the fact that phospholipids move transversely but do so at a very low rate, that basically implies that the asymmetry of the two leaflets can basically be preser uh, uh, preserved. And that's a very important thing because if the asymmetry of the two sides of the membrane was not preserved, that membrane would basically lose its functionality, as we'll see in more detail in a future lecture.